Watch beyond the stars and sky's the limit. The limit. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Against you? Let's make Jesus famous. This is our time. 2021, a year of divine restoration. A year of the
local church is God's way. The gathering of the saints is God's way. And Satan is the one that will try to dismantle the church through vain philosophy and through deception. Now remember that deception always has a measure of truth and runs parallel to truth. So there's no new way or there's no new Bible. We do not conform to this world, we transform this world. We do not fit into the pattern of this world. We change the order and the pattern of this world. We do not bow to the socialistic agenda of this world that is coming out of the East and not the West. There's not your way. There's not a new way. There's one way, His name is Jesus. There's one pattern, and that is the New Testament for us. Listen to me. Good morning, church. Aren't you glad to be in the house on Pentecost Sunday? And welcome to you all watching live on TBN, TBN Year 2, One Gospel, Praise TV, Facebook Live, YouTube, CRC Online, and listening in our radio stations. Are you ready to praise Jesus this morning? Your house is 
pastors and leaders waiting online to meet with you and pray with you God will never leave you he will never forsake you so if that is you please connect with us as we continue to worship in Jesus name like a deer thirst for water my soul my soul longs for you I search for the will of your waters where my soul can be satisfied like a wave reaches to the shore my heart reaches out to yours like driving yearns for the rest I look to you where my help comes from. Like a sparrow, trust 
you for tomorrow. I will trust you in everything. Sing, I will trust, I will trust you in everything. There is nothing like you, Lord, like you. There is nothing that
Lift your hands to him this morning. We need a fresh wind, a fresh move of the Holy Ghost in our world. This is Pentecost. We cry to you, Father. Come on, you need a touch of God. They're in your home this morning. They're in Bloemfontein this morning. hungry for God to touch you this morning and you need a fresh fire all over South Africa come on millions of people watching this program this morning we welcome you TBN TBN yet to one gospel praise TV that is touching millions of people in India and Pakistan Facebook live YouTube live CRC online and then all over Russia Israel America Europe India China Pakistan and Africa let's welcome these people as we welcome those in correctional facilities this morning live with us Kosi Mampuru, Groot Vlai, Kronstadt, Bethlehem, Wernals, Rispol, Small George, Nelspreit, Uppington, Kimberley, Westville and Bangeri, Morimule, Portsmouth, Trim, Zambia and then we have with us today our churches in London, Manchester, Poland, Amsterdam and then all over South Africa today is going to be a great day Amen and uh, we want to welcome the undercover agents of the Department of Health this morning. Special word of welcome to you that have been sent to our churches to take pictures and to see that we do everything um, socially and responsibly correct. We pray that you are on our side and that you will give actual, um, um, uh, factual information. So uh, please make yourself known. Our own media team are taking pictures all the time to make sure that you don't misrepresent what we are doing as a church, CRC, okay? And if you need assistance with pictures of taverns and shopping centers and mines and taxi ranks, we can supply you those photos as well. But I'll tell you something, as the church of Jesus Christ, what we do is safe 
and responsible and we welcome you to engage openly with us. Why do you have to come secretively? I don't know, because you don't engage business secretively and you don't engage minds secretively and you don't engage shopping centers secretively. Why would you do that with a church of Jesus Christ that has the greatest responsibility on planet Earth? So I personally have spoken to Minister McKeese and I say it on television because millions of people are watching. You are not going to put the church in your target, in your sights and think we are just going to roll over. It's not happening. So on that cheerful note, take your place, seats in heavenly places. Um, please, we want to give you all the information, the products that we use 15 hours before we open the building, what we put into this building to ensure the safety of people. I hope your agenda is pure and that your agenda is not against the church of our Lord Jesus Christ because you'll stand before God one day. I don't care whether you're a minister or a president and you'll give account for God. I see it boldly. I say it openly. Amen. I want to talk this morning. Oh, you can give a better, a better hand clap than that. Come on. I mean, I was in a restaurant celebrating a 21st. I think it was Thursday. There was not room for anything. Look at our social distancing and, and etc. So you, you're going to go give an evil report. You better have your legal team ready to defend you. Matthew 24. And I want to talk to you this morning about the church on fire. <laughs> oh, my brother and my sister, more than ever, we need the church of Jesus Christ on fire. Amen. We don't need an apologetic church, an afraid church, a rollover church. We need the church of Jesus on fire in these days, in this hour, because the church is the hope of the world. I mean, if you have to do the counseling, I have to do and see how crazy people have become during this COVID time. There is no option then to open our churches safely and responsibly. And I have been trying to talk to our government, the president himself, the department for 15 months that we can. So I do believe that the five people here today, the three of in Bloemfontein and the five in Johannesburg, that your agenda is to work with the church and not against the church. Yeah, you also get exposed. Thank you. So Matthew 24, verse 12 to 14, the Bible says, And because lawlessness will abound, um, not lawlessness in your life, but lawlessness in the world. That word lawlessness does not talk about moral sin. It talks about opposing that which is good. Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. This is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And this COVID will not determine our worship to God. Amen. We are going to get louder and more on fire and more unashamed for Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody say amen and give the Lord a praise behind your mask. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. You know, I, I, I don't care who's behind. I know this COVID is a real disease and we fight it with science and faith as Christians. And we use common sense. But whatever is behind it has managed to shut our world down in a few months. So for you that think there's still a lot of time before the return of Jesus Christ, do you for one moment think that if God decides to move, that God cannot evangelize the whole world in a quicker time that COVID shut this world down? So we better be wide awake. It's not time to get lukewarm, mediocre, to backslide, and to take a backseat as far as it comes to serving Jesus Christ. Before the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is going to be the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost this world has ever seen. There is going to be the greatest harvest of souls that this world has ever seen by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, I need somebody there in Bloemfontein in front of your home to give the Lord a praise. I see you on the screen today. And I'm sure some of you from the Department of Health, you are Christians as well. So put your camera away and praise the Lord. 
I have no problem with open uh, uh, engagement. Come and tell us what we can do better. Tell us how we can keep our people safer. But if all you want to do is shut us down, it's not going to be that easy. Let me tell you very quickly. It's not happening. Say amen. And if you're afraid, Christian, you better not come to this church. Our president was going to talk to us two months ago. We haven't heard a word. We must just sit down and shut up all the time. So these will be days of sifting. I know my advocates and that are looking at me. I'm not even going to look back at you. These are days of sifting and days of separation in the church at this hour. Don't get nervous. <laughs> when Jesus comes back, He's not coming back for a, a hideaway church. He's not coming back for a church that is afraid, sitting on the sideline. He's coming back for a church in glory, a church in power, a victorious church, a church that will be occupying, a church that will be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, a church that is unafraid and unapologetic about their faith in Christ. Can I have an amen in the name of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. This has been 15 months. When I sat in the last meeting with our president, he said, this COVID will still be around for two to three years. So you mean that we cannot manage our safety as Christians and worship God responsibly, the same that taxi owners are supposed to manage their taxis and the same way that uh, restaurants are supposed to manage their safety protocols. You tell us the church where the people are the most compliant cannot manage this for the next two, three years. You want to tell us churches have to shut down again and what will be the consequences in eternity? Somebody will give account. So God is not coming back for a fearful, lukewarm, mediocre, apologetic church. I mean, the church in the book of Acts was birthed in, in, in the greatest time of persecution. The most oppressive regime. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ was crucified for violating protocols for doing good and I'm not picking on the department of health but you should know that the psyche of people are more important than the physical well-being of people and the spiritual welfare of people will determine the physical welfare of people so if you tamper with their spirituality you tamper with their physical health hear me very very clearly Revelation chapter 3 verse 14, the Bible says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were hot or cold. Rather be a sinner than half a saint. Get both your feet in the church of Jesus Christ. If you are still sitting on the fence, get off the fence. If you are still holding on to the keys of your house, give Jesus the keys of your house. Can I have an amen in Jesus' name? So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you, puke you, the modern translation, out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich, I have become wealthy, I have need of nothing. I don't even need a church. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you. That's what God says to His church. To buy from me gold refined in the fire. Someone say fire. We can't do Christianity without fire. This is not mind over matter. This is not mental ascent. This is not a religion. This is not a cultural practice. This is people that are born again by the Spirit of God, where Jesus Christ is Lord of all, and where you are filled and baptized in the power of the Holy Ghost, where God gets a hold of you, and God turns you inside out, upside down, 
that is the church that people need the Christians people need in these days unapologetic not unconvincing Christians but Christians who talk about God our world are suffering people are bound by poverty it amazes me that nobody wants to talk about the thousands and thousands and thousands we feed every week about the orphanages we have the creches we have everything we do for humanity nobody wants to tell that story why why not talk about the true story story about what we do the children we feed the orphans we take care of the orphanage we have built orphanages the schools we have the creches we have talk about the true story but the haters don't want to talk about the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They want to talk about everything but God. Many of them sit in positions of power. And I'll tell you something, when you die one day, you're not dying with your title and you're not dying with your position. The president and the pauper dies the same. Like at the cross of Jesus, the ground is level. Let me tell you, my brother, when you breathe out your last breath, you are not a president. You are not a billionaire. You are just like everybody else. You will die like the poorest man. You will die like the person that has the least power. You will die like everybody else. And you will stand before your judge. You will stand before your God one day. And you will give account. So you better be very careful what decisions you make concerning the kingdom of God. It says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed on that day, that you stand justified, sanctified, forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, that you stand pure. He says, I will anoint your eyes with salve, that you may see. What a blind people now. You know, the Antichrist operates by the spirit of deception if you study the book of daniel and you study the book of revelation the antichrist will come like christ the antichrist the first three and a half years will come with a kingdom of peace not war the first three years he will replace christ and one of the greatest signs of the beginning of the antichrist is when everything that is deemed holy will be attacked. And that includes the church of Jesus Christ. When the church is taken out of society, we'll save you. We'll keep you safe. Now, I'm not saying, and we have hundreds of doctors in our church, that we do not follow protocol, social distancing, sanitizing, etc. But you better put your faith in more than that. You better put your faith in the living God. Because I've seen healthy people die. I've seen young healthy people drop down dead from a heart attack, have a stroke. I've seen children die for no reason. I've seen old people that drink every day, that smoke every day, live to be a hundred years old. You better live as if Jesus can come back any day. And realize that your life is but a vapor. And that in your 70, 80, 60, 30 years of life, you cannot afford to become lukewarm and do this Jesus thing by the way. Because one day Jesus will come again. And the Bible talks about the five virgins. They were all virgins, notice. Five were ready, five were not. A lot of people not ready now. A lot of people that have grown cold. A lot of people that have grown lukewarm. A lot of people that have become COVID cold. You can look at me in that tone of voice. I don't care. I'm a pastor. I deal with people all the time. And I see how people have lost their love for Jesus. I'm not criticizing you. I don't say you caused this COVID. But to think that you can worship God behind a screen for the rest of your life, you are mistaken, my brother and my sister. It's like having a marriage with your wife over a computer. It ain't happening and it ain't working. God created us social creatures. And part of the trauma people are going through in our world right now is isolation. When you want to punish a prisoner, you put them in isolation. We need to learn. To manage this disease responsibly. Because it might still be around for a while. Amen. I said say amen. We 
We're not here to play Christianity. Jesus is coming again. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Now what does repentance mean? It means turn around. Turn back to God. Get your fire back. It says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So it's a choice. God never forces himself on us. We get into God's presence and we realize, hey, I lost myself. I'm not what I'm supposed to be. I've just become a stroller. I've just become a comfortable Christian. I've become lukewarm. I need to be touched by God again. I need the fire of God again. There are things that has come back in my life that wasn't there when I was on fire. That's why we need fire. We don't need counseling. We need fire. We need the baptism of fire. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to burn out the hay, the chaff and the stubble. Come on, somebody just make the devil mad and do it safely and give the Lord Jesus the biggest praise of this morning. Hallelujah. It, it amazes me how people want to stop churches and I'll be on to that because I have the audience this morning of the health department. So, um... How I walk into restaurants and strangers come from all over with masks and then they sit at the same table without social distancing. But yeah, people come as families and families sit together and we social distance and we pro provide the safest environment possible of any institution and you want to scrutinize us privately. Why not come and say, Pastor, let's work with you. Let's help you open the church safely. Let's help you help people back to God. Let's advise you how to do this better, but not just the attitude that you want to shut the church of Jesus Christ down. Then I have to believe that this government has turned against the church of Jesus. Because you have discussions with every other institution, not with the church. But come election, you want our platforms. I hope you took pictures of the president in Tabanche because I did. I hope you took pictures of the EFF because I did. Oh, we, we took pictures when the president was in Bochabelu. Believe me, I'm not stupid. I've got a lot of pictures of everything happening. So if you want information on, on, on things, ask me. I've got a whole library of pictures. <laughs> Not going to target the church. So in the last days, there will be two categories of Christians. Number one, those who grow cold. They grow cold. They become cold. The Bible says for lawlessness. It's the age of lawlessness. I mean, we're not talking about just the age of sin. Because in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, it was sin. In the days of Rome, when Paul writes uh, to the Roman church, in Romans chapter 1, he actually sets the tone of the rest of the gospel, which is grace and mercy, how to deal with sin. Romans 1, where people get stuck in, he is setting the tone of how Rome was. Bestiality was the order of the day and many other sins. As a matter of fact, you could smell Rome from miles away because it was so unclean. And, and the level of sin and debauchery was beyond what we can ever imagine. So the world hasn't become a, a worse place when it comes to sin. But when it comes to lawlessness, we, let me not even say that you may not own a gun. I'm not saying that for self-defense. So a woman may live in a house by herself and she may not own a gun to defend herself, but the criminals who come to rape her all have guns. So they can take 10 minutes to break down her door and she may not have a gun to protect herself. What is that? What is that where good can no longer be good? where the righteous can no longer defend themselves, where the criminal has greater rights than the innocent. What is that? What is that? Time for the righteous to stand up. Time for the church to stand up. Time to have your voice heard. 
in the name of, oh come on in the name of Jesus Christ. Because if we are not light, then darkness is going to take over. If we are not light, darkness are going to take over. You can't sit in a corner and put your light under a bushel and say God is in control. No, my brother, God is controlled through His church. Jesus came to build His church. The church is His voice in society. The church, together with the government, can break the back of poverty by 2030. But don't alienate the church. I plead with this government. Don't alienate the church. Hold us accountable as we will hold you accountable. And after you've been here and done your investigation secretively, why, I don't know, because that makes your agenda questionable. Come sit with us. We've tried to talk to you forever. You give us a closed door. So those who grow cold, they lose their love for Jesus. They lose their seal for the things of God. Something else or someone else becomes more important, like politics. And, and I'm for politicians, but thank God He never sent a politician to save the world. I've been a pastor for 34 years, and in the free state alone, I've met with six or seven different premiers. They come, they go. They come, they go. The president is going to come and he's going to go. Those who are passing laws are going to come and they are going to go. But the church of Jesus Christ has to remain. And Jesus will come back for his church one day. He's not coming back for a political party. Listen. So you're first a Christian before you're an ANC minister. We have several ministers come to the church. We have great discussions. That 90% of ministers actually was in favor of churches opening safety. Why are you opposing it? The truth be told to these millions watching this morning. The second group in the church are those who endure to the end. Nothing steals their faith. They are the burning ones like you this morning. Amen. I said they are the on fire ones, the burning ones. The, oh, come on. Those who don't lose their zeal. They don't lose their praise. They don't lose their worship. They don't lose their sacrifice. Come on, shout amen in the name of Jesus. They live for His glory. The cross before me, the world behind me. It's one solution for our world. And that's the fire of God that Jesus promised. I have to move quickly. Johannesburg is waiting and so are those... The day I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop preaching is when you find me in a coffin. And then, actually, on that day even, my bones are going to save somebody. My bones are going to be preaching. Even if you burn me, the ashes are going to be preaching in the name of Jesus. I will not be silenced by nothing. Listen to me carefully. Because our cause is just. Our cause is righteous. We have the hope of the world. We are the only people who can get people to heaven. No government gets people to heaven. It is the church of Jesus Christ. We need to take care of people's physical bodies, but we also have to take care of these spiritual beings because when you die, when your body dies, your spirit goes to heaven or your spirit goes to hell. It's not a second chance. So the church cannot be silenced. Listen to me. And I advocate many of our CRC churches are not open because they cannot Follow the regulations we have imposed, which is so high that few churches can operate. By our safety protocol, it's not a business, I challenge you, that operates on our level when it comes to securing people's safety. I'm not just talking about a little san sanitizing and social distancing. We spend hundreds of thousands every single month to put things through our ventilation system to make sure we test, we swab all the time to see there's no COVID presence in our building. Show me anybody else who does that. Any business. So Jesus came with an assignment to save you, but not just to get you to heaven. 
to get you on fire while you are alive in this world. He came to put a fire in you and to get a fire to burn through you. Now you need to listen. I have 10 minutes left. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, he said, I indeed baptize you with water, or John, that's speaking, unto repentance, turn back to God. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, you know, people talk all the time. They say, Pastor, I'm having this problem, that problem, that problem. I say, get yourself on fire, man. They say, what are you talking about? And I say, get into the presence of God. Get yourself on fire because flies don't sit on a hot plate. Get yourself on fire. Get yourself full of the Holy Ghost. Get the fire of God back in your life. And if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, this is what Pentecost is all about. Not a little goosebump experience, but God setting His church on fire to change the world right side up. To be the voice of social justice. To be the voice of equality. To be the voice of guidance. Light in the midst of darkness. A voice that will bring hope to the hopeless. That will bring healing to the broken hearted. You know suicide is on an all time high. Do I have to give you the statistics? You should be giving it to me. Depression. 60 to 70% of teenagers admit that they struggle with depression because we've taken Jesus away from them. Luke chapter 12, verse 49, the Bible says, I came to send a fire on the earth. How I wish that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with and how distressed I am until it is accomplished. Because listen, this fire is what secures the future of God's kingdom. Not gentle Jesus. Because Jesus was a man on fire. The Bible says, the zeal for thine house has consumed him. He was a zealous man. You could not shut him down. Eleven attempts of his, on his life, you could not shut him down. He wasn't this little picture in your Bible of a gentle Jesus, underfed, white, pasty looking, with a little white robe, a little lamb under his arm, a butterfly in the meadow, and with a little finger like this, begging you to follow him. Oh no, my brother and my sister. He was God and man in a body. He was Lord and God on the earth. He was fearless. He preached the gospel unapologetically. He healed the brokenhearted. He set a, oh come on, a pattern of the church that we are not here for ourselves. We are here to heal the broken, to save the lost, to cleanse the lepers, to help the poor. That's why we are here. You know, people not baptized with the Holy Ghost live self-consumed. But the Holy Ghost has to build, burn the self-absorbedness, my English word, I'm Afrikaans, out of us. Because mo most people are just taken up with themselves and their children. And to hell with the rest, literally. It's just about me. And that's not the Christianity Jesus came to bring. He came to bring Christianity that will change you inside out that will open your eyes to the world and to the pain of those to if you have to help those who don't have if you can you create jobs for those who don't have jobs you live a life beyond yourself not a self-centered little goosebump christian experience which actually is not found in the bible there's no self-absorbed christianity found in the bible It's a Western version that has destroyed the impact of the church. That it's all about your blessing and your material status and your status in life. God can't care less what your title is. As a matter of fact, He said, I'll make you the head. I'll bless you so that you can be a blessing. That's what the fire of God does. The fire of God gives you an outward vision. We read it in Revelation. He said, I'll anoint your eyes with salt so you can see again. Not just see yourself. Your pain, your hurt, when the fire comes, He heals your pain. He heals your hurt. Listen, He delivers you from yourself so that you can be a vessel of deliverance for others. He heals you so that you can be hands of healing out there. He takes the fear out and He puts a boldness in you. I love that seven. It's perfect. <laughs> It says, do you suppose, verse, 
Listen now, verse 51. That I came to bring peace. I tell you not, but division. What division is he talking about? Those who love him and those who don't. Ministers in parliament who love him and those who don't. A husband and a wife, one loves him, the other one does not. What are you going to do? You're going to love your husband more than Jesus. I told my wife when I married her, I said to her, actually I proposed to her, I said, I love you more than anybody else on the earth, but I love Jesus more. I said, I love him more. I said, listen, because I served Jesus long before she came along. And um, if you wonder where she is, just quickly, she's on a sabbatical. She's had like five operations in the last two years. So we've put her on a sabbatical so she can recover herself, okay? So she's out of circulation for good reason, okay? So if you feel like praying, then pray. But I said, I love Jesus more. My kids had to understand that. Because sometimes I had to go and preach the gospel. I could go go stand by the rugby and support the the rugby game. Because I had to preach the gospel. I had to teach them from the day that they're born. Because I love Jesus, you are first in my life. But daddy can't always be there for you. Because it's not about me and you. It's about the purpose of Jesus upon my life. And then the purpose of Jesus upon our lives. That you don't do this Jesus your way. You are full on. You totally surrender. Amen. So the snakes will get uncomfortable now. Do you suppose that I came to bring peace on the earth? I tell you no division. Five in one house will be divided. Three against two, two against three. Father will be divided against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Then he said to the multitudes, when you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, rain is coming, or a shower. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be hot weather. And here it is, hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky and the earth, But how is it that you do not discern this time, which is the last of 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 the last days? And all that matters is preserving your lifestyle and preserving your comfort. What did Jesus come to do? To give you purpose beyond yourself. To set you on fire. To notice the broken and the hurting in your life. To turn you into an ambassador for God. To turn you into a fire bearer. To turn you into an arrow in the hand of God. To give you a purpose. To make you a history maker. That's what Jesus came to do. He didn't come to give you a toned down, soft, rollover version of religion. He came to turn you into a little Jesus and you cannot be like Him if you don't have what He has. He had the power of the Holy Ghost upon His life. And I want to tell you, I'm going to believe God in the next few weeks that there's going to be a fresh fire that's going to fall upon the church and it's going to fall upon your life. And God's going to burn out the hay and the chaff and the stubble. And God's going to set you on fire. And this fire of God is going to promote you and elevate you and lift you up. And you are going to do great things for God by helping the poor, by alleviating suffering by feeding people, clothing the naked, doing that which Jesus came to do. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19. Oh, come on, somebody that's hungry for the fire. I don't have much time left. Just lift your one hand to God and say, Father, baptize me afresh with your fire. Baptize me afresh with your fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, touch me one more time. I'll continue tonight to talk about the fire. And I'm going to talk about my own life. How many times God (laughs) put fresh fresh fire upon me and how we cannot live without the fire of God. Cannot. Otherwise, we just become like everybody else, afraid, roll over, and we change nothing. We're supposed to be those of impact. We're supposed to be people of influence. We're the light of the world, the salt of the earth. If Jesus is not at the center of Everything is nowhere. I want every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving this morning, please. I have to go meet my friends in Johannesburg. 
So all over this place this morning, you've not yet raised your hand. Your life is not right with God. In front of your television this morning, God's not against you. This message is because God loves you. You need to listen. Say, God, I want to get back to you. I want to get back to you. I don't want to be this lukewarm person. I want to get back to you. I want to get back on fire. I want to live for you. All you have to do is take one step in the right direction. I'm going to pray for the television audience, then my daughter's going to come and pray for this audience. Unfortunately, I have to run. You know, like Philip translated, somebody said, how do you get there? Um, if you listen, you'll hear how I get there. Pray this prayer right now in television land. Put your hand on your heart this morning, right there in India, and just say this right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I give myself back to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for my sin. I believe you are the Christ. Today, I surrender all to you. Thank you for a fresh start. Thank you for a new beginning. Thank you for loving me just as I am. I'm your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give those people, come on, these. so many watching this program all over the world. You know, in Russia, we have 7 million people watch this program. That's a lot of people, so they hear everything I say right here in South Africa. India, we are in 300 million homes, India and Pakistan. That's huge. God's opened a great door of opportunity, so we're not going to preach this gospel apologetically. I love you all on television. Make your way to your church. Come on. God bless you. Amen. 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 We're going to just spend a moment in worship, please. And... You know, there's nothing like God touching you. That's why we can't take this away from people. Because this is eternity. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. This, worshiping our God and serving Him, nobody has the right to take that away from us. No one. So if you want to sit, that's fine. But you know, I've learned when I stand, I show more respect for God. Just stand. You here for the first time? Those taking photos, just put your little photo thing now away. Maybe you actually came here today to be touched by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm asking you, work with us. Help us open our churches safely so we can help this government heal South Africa. I ask you, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's spend a moment in worship.
that you will continue to pour your spirit out on every single one of our hearts, on every single one of our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to every single one of us, that you truly will touch us, that every single one of us truly heard what you needed us to hear today, and that we will walk out here completely changed, because we know that one touch from you will change our entire lives. Everything that we've gone through, Father, that one moment in your presence, you will heal and you will restore. So we want to honor you right now. We thank you that we can come before you and worship and lift holy hands to you, Father. We thank you that today we will draw nearer to you than ever before. And that we will be those Christians that Pastor that has been speaking about. Those Christians that will walk with the fire. Those Christians that will make a difference wherever we go. Those Christians that will stand for God like never before. We thank you that every single one of us truly will be those people. We honor you and we thank you. And right now, I just want every head bowed, every eye closed as we're standing here in a time of worship. They're in Amsterdam, they're in London, in Bloemfontein North, in Bloemfontein South, wherever you are. I want you to know that Jesus really loves you. He loves you so much that God loves you. And that's why He sent His very best. He sent Jesus Christ, His only Son, to die on the cross for you. Because that is how valuable and important you are to Him. And I know when you go through tough times, I've been there. When you feel heartless, when you feel like giving up, when you feel like there's no hope, I want to tell you, hey, that Jesus is the hope of the world, that Jesus is the hope of our church, and Jesus is going to turn your life around, but you need to allow Him to. So maybe you're standing in this place at your very first time, yeah, they're on TV. It might be your first time watching there in London in Amsterdam. I want to tell you that God really loves you and He wants to touch you. He wants to meet you where you are at. He does not care what you, are, uh, what you have done. He does not care what you have been through. He doesn't care how many times you have run away or how many times you have fallen. No, He cares about you. And He called you. He chose you for a time such as this. So you want to be with that Christian that Passat spoke about? Firstly, you need to have an intimate and a personal relationship with Him. You need to invite Him to be your Lord and your Savior. So in this place, maybe it's you, yeah. Maybe you ran away from God and He's calling you home today. I'm going to ask you just to slip your hand up high. Just raise it up high right there in Bloemfontein North, in Bloemfontein South, wherever you are right now. Just lift up your hand to Him. Oh, I promise you right now, God touched me. God changed my life. And because of that, I will never go back. Because of that, I have been healed. I have been set free. And that is what He wants to do. And that's why we do this. Because it's been real to us. We have seen how God has changed us. So I'm going to ask you again, if that is you in this place, you want to come back to Jesus for the first time, or you want to come to Jesus for the first time, or if you want to come back, then just lift up your hand right now. Raise it high. Raise it high. Thank you. I see those hands. Oh, there's more of you. There's a stirring inside of you. That's God calling you home right now. Just lift up your hands. Raise it up high. And I want the leaders and the ushers, they're going to see where you are and they are going to come to you in a few moments. But I need you to pray this prayer after me. Put your one hand on your heart. Raise your other hand to heaven and just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for all of my sins. Today, I invite you, Jesus, to come and live inside of my life. I ask you, to forgive me of all of my sins and to cleanse me clean. Thank you, Jesus, that from today I am a new creation. Thank you that my past is forgotten and that from today I will focus on the greatest things that you have for me. I love you, Jesus. You are my King. You are my Savior. And you are my Lord in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen and Amen. Oh, come on. This is the greatest decision that you will ever make in your life. You are going to see God is going to change your life. You need to allow Him to draw closer to Him than ever before. Let's give God one more shout of praise in this place. Oh, come on. He is worthy. He is worthy. We're going to see a fresh fire. Oh, He He's going to pour on us like never before. We're going to see a change. He's going to fulfill every need, every expectation that you have. Watch. Watch what God is going to do in your life. Amen and amen. 
Amen. Thank you, family. We are so excited. Oh, come on, like Pastor Ada said, this will be the greatest revival. Before we see Jesus coming, we're going to see a greater revival than ever before in every single person's life, wherever we go. Amen and amen. Thank you, family. You can take your seats right now. And you can please turn your attention to the screens for the announcements. Thank you. A season of restoration. Welcome to CRC, the best place to be. On behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Art and Pastor Narrator Bosov, it's good to see you here. Most definitely, TV. And so today, we are celebrating Pentecost Sunday. This is where we were given the gift of the Holy Spirit. So let's celebrate today and be so grateful for the fact that Jesus sent us our very own helper in the person of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 